Anytime that something is wrong, I'm also reminded, oh, you're not her father. As soon as we start to argue, you're not her father. But if you, you need, do, if you you need something, stuff, I'm you the father. You say stuff to hurt my feelings, why can't I Have I ever told you? you that you're not the parent of your kid? You can't! I pushed him out! This couple had a lot on the line, and if they could not resolve their paternity issue, their 13-year relationship would go down the drain. Ms. Dupree was in court with the hopes of proving to the defendant that he was the father of her twins. The problem with their situation was that Ms. Dupree cheated. She opened her case like this. Ms. Dupree, you're here because you say if you cannot resolve your paternity dispute, your 13-year relationship with the defendant is on the brink of ending. You're here to prove that he is the father of your four-month-old twins, Skye and Skylar, and you're hoping to save your family. We've been together for 13 years off and on from high school, and we had practically planned this whole thing. And he stayed with me for like eight months out of my apartment. They've been together since high school? They must have really loved each other. I wonder where it all went wrong. Ms. Dupree told the judge that she was most definitely certain that the defendant, Mr. Flagg, was the father of her twins. Oh, he's your children's father because of what? The amount of time you spent together? Yes. Also, I had two miscarriages through this. We, we planned it and all of a sudden when I get pregnant, you want to say that you are not the father. Mr. Flagg, so you've been with this woman since high school? Yes, Your Honor. And so when you find out she's pregnant... When I first found out, Your Honor, I was happy. You were. Take your time. This is what this is about. We're trying to get to the truth. Hmm. Even before she gave birth to the twins, Mr. Flagg had doubts about the pregnancy. Now, what did you do, Ms. Dupree? You sure must have done something. Anyway, when Judge Luaren asked him why he had doubts, this was the reason he gave. For yours. Because I had doubts, Your Honor. I have found out the real truth when... So, tell me what you heard two days ago. What did you hear exactly? Well, Your Honor, she had told me the truth about her ex-boyfriend. She did? Yes. What did she say? She had told me she was uh, sleeping with him. She was. Yeah, and I was, I was, yeah, I was mad. I had to calm myself down. Wow, she slept with her ex during the window of conception. Now I know why their relationship is hanging on a thread. She broke his heart, that's for sure. Mr. Flagg went on to explain to the judge how his doubts started in the first place. The whole house smelled like sex, Your Honor. Oh. And so, so when I go on towards the bedroom, her hair messed up. I want to hear this story. Look around the house, everything's straight. But when I got to my the bedroom, like on the side bed, it's some shoes. Some shoes? Yeah. So I'm looking at the shoes yeah, that's and looking true. at my size. Hmm. Let's just say the man she cheated with left in a hurry so he would not be caught. Now, after he saw the random shoes in his house, he decided to confront Ms. Dupree about the shoes. And trust me, her reply was even worse than what you expected. Take a look. I had asked her, whose shoes are they? She's like, it don't matter, don't, just leave it alone. I'm like, what you mean, leave it alone? It doesn't matter? Yeah. Did you say it didn't matter, Ms. Dupree? Yes, well, when Your he Honor. saw these shoes and said, whose yes, shoes are they? So he did see the shoes. Yes, he did. They were big shoes. They was big shoes. And they were by the side of the bed. Yes. And they, they weren't his. They weren't his, Your Honor. They was my friend, the boyfriend, because they both came over. Well, Ms. Dupree had better come out with the truth because the explanation she gave does not sound convincing at all. Here's something that's going to shock you. Trying to figure out who she had cheated with, Mr. Flagg asked to smell Ms. Dupree's body. And this happened next. I'm going to say that I just understood the testimony and not have you repeat that. So you asked to smell her body because you felt like the house smelled like sexual intercourse had taken place imminently. Yeah. Did she allow you to do that? No. <laughs> Okay. Uh, enough with the lies already, Ms. Dupre. Everyone in the courtroom can smell the lies from a mile away. Anyway, Judge Lauren dug deeper in trying to change the topic, told the judge that she never slept with her ex. She only told Mr. Flagg that she did because she was mad at him for also cheating. <laughs> All the times so he cheated and came in and when around my birthday, when I broke up with him and I asked him to work on our family, two days later he had sex with the girl and uh, some girl and he had the smell all on his face and he smelled like that. So I just told him I had sex with my There's too many smells in this case. Now, that was a good one. There was a lot of smelling going on in their relationship. Judge Lauren went on to ask Mr. Flagg if he had been taking care of the twins. Of course, he said yes, but Ms. Dupree said that was a fat ass lie. Are you Mr. Flagg? Yes, I will step up, cause- You will or you have been? I I've been, yes, I have. No, I have, have been not. stepping up though. Your Honor, no he have not. He, he have not did really nothing for, the, for my kids. He only thing he bought was the car seats. Mom, I did the whole baby shower. 
her. He only, when he came, he came with one case of diapers, a blanket for each baby, some socks for um, each baby, the face rags, and maybe two, three outfits. Well, there's only one way this can end, and that is to have the DNA results revealed. Wasting no further time, the judge pulled out the envelope and gave the verdict. Mr. Flagg, you are their father. So, congratulations, Mr. Flagg. You happy? Yes, I'm very happy. And I probably want to do a, do something else too. What would you like to do? I love you. Thank you. I mean, I'm so nervous. I go ahead. Okay, I love you. After getting caught in paternity court once, Ms. Bodine is in paternity court again, this time to find out if her two children actually belong to Mr. Benning. How many times is Mr. Benning going to cry on live TV in a courtroom? Let's find out. It all began like this. You know, left me hurt. I always wanted the daughter, and I promised I was going to take care of her and treat her like my mother took care of me. Oh, that's so wonderful. I've always stuck by with that. So having a daughter has been so important to you. So important. I waited first. <laughs> And tell me about that relationship. Um, you know, we are so close. She's goofy, you know, she's always, she loves daddy, she's a daddy. Uh, we love to play. There's no use denying it at this point. Regardless of this, she almost swears that he is the father of her baby girl, Robin. Mr. Benning, on the other hand, explains that he was so excited to hear that Ms. Bodine was pregnant. The wildest thing happened so very quickly. It happened during labor, Your Honor. I was in the hospital sitting across from Kayla. She was pushing this baby out. Out. And I received a text from a guy telling me to leave the hospital because that's his baby and he needs to be there. I am in labor, like literally in the hospital. And I received a text telling me that the child that I'm waiting to come isn't mine. And so you get the text and you know who it's from. Yes. Oh my, what an experience. Funny enough, Ms. Bodine got the other potential father tested and brought the results to the paternity court today. It reads that there is a 0% probability of paternity between Robin and the other man. Moving on, the following conversation ensued. Quite a few. First off, their DNA test doesn't mean anything because in fact that she's cheated on me with more than one person. Oh. There could be other guys out there. That's just one, you know? Now. That's the plot twist. <laughs> as well as, Your Honor, any time that something's wrong, I'm also reminded, oh, you're not her father. Well, oh my word. Both Mr. Benning and Ms. Bodine agree that Robin looks so much like Mr. Benning's late mother, and she may just be the woman brought back to life for him. Oh, who's gonna tell them? Judge Lake's paternity court would be the judge of that. Change her diaper and look at her and play with her, and she's calling me daddy, and there's something in the back of my head saying, she might not be. You know, there's a text message on my phone saying, she's not yours. There's people calling me on my phone saying, I'm her dad. You know, it's constant, it's just constant, and... Well, this is why we get approved. Oh, please, Miss Bodine, we both know the results of what we're here to provey, and that you and your actions are going to crush this man all over again. She says she is 100% certain that he is the father, but for some reason, Mr. Benning still does not trust it. What a hurt man. Are not the father. I'm very sorry. It doesn't matter, I'm still gonna be there. I'm lonely when she calls that him. What an awfully painful moment. Ms. Bodine stands there shocked, not knowing what to do with herself at that moment. What a woman. On to the next, which is baby Jermaine Jr. Here are the doubts Mr. Benning has about none other than Ms. Bodine herself. Amazing woman, really. To the court. Yes, it was her. There was a text to you, Mr. Benning, that says, I'm filing papers for a DNA test on Jermaine. That'll cause paternity doubt Indeed. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's your honor, it's your death, <laughs> every day. You sent that text, Miss Bodine? In addition to all of this, Mr. Benning was in the hospital for Jermaine Jr.'s birth. He has his first name and everything. How does a person send that sort of text message after letting him sit through all of that, sign his birth certificate, and take his first and last name? The results are out, and here is the verdict. You are not the father. <laughs> what the? Oh. oh, I'm so sorry. I got cribs and playpens and toys, and I've done everything that I do. And Miss Bodine, 
Do you know who Jermaine Jr.'s father is? No, Your Honor. In this situation, Mr. Walls claimed to have been away for a while, and when he got back, he saw the defendant, Ms. Walker, having some funny business with another man. He claimed that she was a serial cheater, and he was certain he was not the father of the child. This was how he opened his case. Mr. Walls, you say that after spending a short time away from Ms. Walker, you caught her with someone else's hands in her cookie jar. Yes, Your Honor. All right, you say Ms. Walker is a serial cheater, and there is no way you are her child. Well, I worked across the street from where Dominique stayed, and when Dominique would walk out of her house going down the street, and I'm like, hey, how you doing? You know, trying to catch her attention. It looks like the long wait to get her number was worth it after all. In no time, things got very romantic between them. They started spending time together and going on dates. We, we started going out there, you know, spending time uh, by the water. I felt it was a lot, it was romantic, you know, and uh, so. And so, Miss Walker? Yes, you are. He seemed like he was a gentleman courting you. You went out with him? Yes, you are. It was a good relationship at first? It was good in the beginning until I found out I was pregnant. And when I found out I was pregnant, I told him, but he talked about he wanted a DNA test. Hmm, I knew we were about to get to the bad part, but was he really a family member, Ms. Walker? Well, we are going to find out. The funny thing about this couple was that even though they had a very lovely time together, they never got into an actual relationship. It's turned into a real relationship is the point. Um... Okay, that took too long. So it was uh, not a relationship. So you all were having sex. Yeah. Without protection. Pretty much. But not in a relationship. So when she told you she was pregnant and it was your child, you had doubt. Yeah. Your Honor, when I told him I went pregnant and he had said, well, I need to take a DNA test because he said he didn't trust me. But she, she admitted to cheating, though. Did she just admit to cheating? Wow. If I were in his shoes, I would probably have doubts about the baby as well. As if that was not enough, Mr. Walls went on to talk about a situation where he actually caught Ms. Walker in another man's car. This was how he began the story. So I said, wait a minute. I goes all the way back around the corner, come back, slow down. I look like, no, that don't look like Dominique in that car. Like, that ain't Miss Walker, like, no. So I said, forget it, I drive on around again. I'm on around you on again. your third lap? Yeah, I'm on my third <laughs> lap now. I'm doing a Hollywood stop now, like, yeah, that's her. That's her in the car. And then I confronted her about that. Aha! Uh -huh. You've been caught, Ms. Walker. If indeed she was pregnant and the baby belonged to Mr. Wills, she had no right to do anything with another guy. Moving on, Mr. Wills was not done listening to the scenarios he witnessed, which made him doubt the baby. I call her phone. She'll say she at home. I go to her house, knock on the door. Her mama come downstairs and say, Dominique not here. Dominique went over her god sister's house. I just talked to Dominique. She said she was home. This happens a no, couple of times. No, oh, no, you are. Oh my gosh, I wish no. your mama was here. Because from we're gonna start from the, the time he said he was living with his baby mama. He was he was telling me was that he was me, he gonna promise to leave her to so he can be with me and my child. Ah, that explains why they couldn't get into a proper relationship. They can't even make a complete sentence without yelling at each other. Again, Mr. Wills went on to explain that with his other five kids, he had pregnancy symptoms. But with Ms. Walker's child, he never felt any such symptoms. Looking up a little bit, I'm feeling a little nauseous. And with her, her pregnancy, I had none of that. How many other kids do you have? I got five other kids. Okay. You had pregnancy symptoms with all five? Yeah, pretty much. You did. Degrees. It could be very minimal to something that dad doesn't even notice, like love handles. And he figures he's getting a little bigger because mom's eating more. I'm um, too nausea, vomit abdominal pain, so it does certainly exist. Wow. It looks like he wasn't lying after all. The funny feeling is actually a real thing. Could that mean the baby does not belong to him? Well, the DNA results are about to reveal just that. And we will know if Ms. Walker has been lying all this while. Mr. Walls, you are not her father. Ms. Walker, I gave you an opportunity. At least five. Well, I apologize. I'm sorry. I didn't... Three years. Do you know who her father is? Yeah. Was it the guy in the car? No. This is one messy situation you will never forget. Trust me. Ms. Bargy found herself in the middle of two men, her husband and her ex-boyfriend. The crazy thing about this situation was that both men believed they were the father of Ms. Bargy's baby, and she had no idea who the father was. She started her case by saying this. Ms. Bargy, you and I spoke briefly in my chambers. Yes, Your Honor. You admit you cheated on your husband, and now you are caught in a paternity triangle, with both men believing they fathered your two-month-old daughter, McKenna. 
Yes, sir. At least she's not denying making a mistake. And the beautiful part is that she wants to find a way out. Judge Lauren, understanding the intensity of the situation, proceeds to ask her husband what type of bond he had built with the child. As you would expect, he loved the baby beyond words could explain. So, Mr. Bargy, yes. you've fallen in love with McKenna. Yes. Tell me about the relationship you have with her. Um, I, I could be at work for 10 to 12 hours a day. I take five minutes out of my time, busy or not at work, video call, shit here, like that right there. I wake her up when I get home. Aren't they just cute in that video? Anyway, Mr. Lawson, the ex-boyfriend, wasn't ready to give up his claim of being the father of the child, even after seeing Ms. Bargy's husband and the baby bond so well. He decided to tell the judge the reason why he felt he was the father of the child and started like this. I believe I am because I was around. She was with me when she got pregnant. I was there for the whole pregnancy. I was there when McKenna was born. Ms. Bargy, can you explain to the court how we got here? I was having issues with my husband when I came back. We had been together for about a month, and we ended up um, having intimate. Mmm. Seems like the break from her marriage took a wild turn, and now she's paying the consequences. Now, trust me, that's not all. When she found out she was pregnant, she told Mr. Lawson before her husband. Why? Because they were living together at the time. Oh, you heard right. The day that I found out was the end of April. It was April the 27th. I, it, the whole month of April, I was getting sick and I took a pregnancy test and then it came back that I was pregnant. Who did you tell first? I told my mother first and me and Calvin had been living together. Even Judge Lauren was disappointed to hear that, but there was more disappointment coming her way. Ms. Bargy never mentioned the pregnancy to her husband. She claimed she didn't have the courage to confront him about it, but here's how he found out. The time when you actually got a the courage to tell your husband that you were pregnant and McKenna could be his child. I did not tell my husband, period. He had a mutual friend that was on my Facebook and they had actually sent him a picture of me posting an ultrasound. Wow, so she was sleeping with Mr. Lawson and her husband at the same time? That explains why they both feel they could be possible fathers of the baby, but the truth bombs keep getting worse. Ms. Bargy went on to tell the judge that she found out that her husband was also sleeping with his ex. One time, and that was due to the fact that he had spoken to one of my friends and they had talked about actually being together. It was my friend was one of his exes. His ex actually messaged me and was showing me messages that him and her were sleeping together when Ooh, me and Mr. Lawson? Yes. Oh, I'm siding with Judge Lauren. That's one big mess. Unlike Ms. Bargy's husband, Mr. Lawson had no relationship with the child in question. He claimed that when he tried to be in the child's life several times, Ms. Bargy was evasive because she wanted her husband to be the father of the child. Right now, I don't have a relationship because when Ms. Bargy left, we have talked and tried to set up times for me to see her, but there is uh, a lack of information. You feel like she's being evasive. Your Honor, he, I have given him plenty of opportunities to see her. I've said, I've called him three and four days in advance and said, look. Hmm. Could Mr. Lawson be lying about trying to see her child? Who knows? Ms. Bargy made one thing clear to the judge. She claimed that if Mr. Lawson ended up being the father, she wouldn't want him anywhere near her child. If Mr. Lawson is McKenna's biological father, have you thought about where you go from here? If Mr. Lawson is her father, I, I do not want him to be a part of her life, period. Like, I want rights terminated because I, my daughter deserves so much better. My husband has been there and took care of her since all this has happened. He has been an amazing father. She must really dislike Mr. Lawson. Well, it's time we reveal the DNA results and bring their paternity drama to an end. Let's see if Ms. Bargy's prayers are going to be answered. The biological father is Mr. Lawson. You are McKenna's biological father, Mr. Lawson. That's okay. I'm still gonna raise her. Do you want to be in her life? Yes, Your Honor. You do? fact that he wants to be a part of her life, you guys gotta figure this out. But I won't 